Are you late to class all the time? Are red lights stopping you from turning in your late work and you simply don't have any restroom passes to spare? Well, we've got you covered with Savannah's insurance. Okay, question number one. Which is a factor of 3x cubed plus 5x squared minus 27x minus 45? Select all that apply. So first thing I'm going to do is see if there's any greatest common factor. And there is, but I also... Um, I don't see a greatest common factor between all of these 3, 5, 27, and 45. Um, but I can count the number of terms, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. So this one you're going to have to do factoring by grouping. Factor by grouping. Remember, there's two choices here. Um, you can use the box method. Let's do that part right now. So remember here, I'm going to try to go in a Z. So I have a 3x cubed, positive 5x squared, minus 27x, and minus 45. All right, in this method, I'm trying to find the uh, GCF of this column here going up and down and I think it's 3x and then the row going in this direction the GCF is um, x squared and then this one is going to be a minus um, 9 and this one will be a positive 5 I'm going to check my answer by multiplying 3x times x squared gives me 3x cubed, x squared times 5 gives me 5x squared, 3x times negative 9 gives me negative 27x, and negative 9 times positive 5 gives me negative 45. Okay, so let's hide here in green. These are my answers, but let's write this out. 3x plus 5 and x squared minus 9. Now if you notice x squared minus 9 is not any of the choices for number 1 because you have to add a placeholder. And when you do that here in green you're going to have to factor again. So this would be um, a times c would be negative 9 my b value would be zero. My two numbers are three and negative three. Okay, so this would leave us with three x plus five and x plus three, x minus three is our answer. So here is my answer. So let's see, this problem says, um, check all that apply so it can be multiple ones so 3x plus 5 this would be this one and x plus 3 would be this one and x minus 3 would be this one based on these answers um, this is how many points you were awarded based on how many you got correct and incorrect all right let's try number two this problem is the chunking, no chunking. How do I know that? Remember chunking, so let's, let's show you first by chunking. This works when you focus on just these two right here as your greatest common factor. Do they have a greatest common factor? They do. They have a 3x, so 3x squared, okay, because 3x times 3x is 9x squared. Now I have to think of something where 3x times something equals negative 30x. That would be a 10. And this would be a 25. So my substitution, uh, let's go ahead and highlight this in blue. My substitution, let's use, I don't know. Uh, let's use a uh, triangle. Triangle equals well, it looks like a box already, doesn't it? Let's just do that. Box equals 3x. So now I have the box squared.
squared minus 10 times the box plus 25. And the reason why I did that is so I'm going from a value of 9 as my a value. Now my a value is just 1. So I have 1, negative 10, and 25. So a times c would be 25. My b value is negative 10. My two numbers are going to be um, multiply to be 25 and add to be negative 10. So that's negative 5 and negative 5. And then let's just put our box back in there. Okay. In years past, students would make this mistake right here. So put your put your box back in right there. What is our box equal to? It is equal to 3x. So let's go ahead and write that. 3x minus 5. 3x minus 5. And you'll notice that these are the same. So you can say that you have a quantity or two, or the exponent is two. So this would be choice um, B is your answer. All right, let's show you that same problem with uh, no chunking. No chunk. So 9x squared minus 30x plus 25. This is not going to be fun. Okay. Um, let's do it over here. I have my x in my box. And uh, let me pull up my calculator. That's how fun this problem will be. And I'm going to do 9 times 25, which I think is going to be 225. Okay, 225. So just to recap, this is your A, B, and C. A times C is 225. My B value is negative 30. My factors of 225 are 225 times 1. I know that it is also 25 nine times 9 because we just did that. Uh, my trick was putting into the calculator. Actually, I can do it on here. I'll show you guys with my free calculator, graphing calc. Go to y equals and then do 225 divided by x. And then I'm going to do a table set, second table. I want it to count by ones. And switch to auto. So then I'm going to go press table. And what it's doing is on the left side, it's doing 225 times 1. Your answer is 225. And so I'm looking for all the ones that are divisible with no decimal. So 225 divided by 3 is 75. So that's one of them. 5 and 45. 5 times 45 will give me 225. 9 times 25, we knew that one, and then 15 times 15, okay? So let's write down all of those. Uh, 375, 545. Um, we said 45 and uh, 9180. Five? Five extra two, yeah, 225. And then 15 times 15. Okay, which one of those? It's gonna be this one, 15 and 15. Negative 15 times negative 15 equals a positive 225, and negative 15 plus negative 15 gives me negative 30. Okay, I have to put that into the box. And so, um, the yellow right there is splitting the B term. That's why you're adding an X here. Let's go ahead and write. This one's going to go in the top left. This one goes in the bottom right. And we're just going to factor that one. GCF in that direction will be a 3X. GCF in this direction will be a 5. And it looks to be a negative 5. 
um, because if you go over here, GCF this way would be 3x and then a negative 5. And so 3x, um, you can see there is the same answer as uh, the one to the left. You have two of those, so you can do exponent times two, okay? All right, so those are both methods. Question number three, which of the following expressions are examples of either the sum and difference of cubes. Mark all mark all that are an example of the sum or, of cubes or the difference of cubes. Okay, so uh, it's kind of like multiple, multiple choice. Um, a couple things that you need to remember. You can just write out the formula. I'll write them out really quickly for you. Uh, the sum of cubes is just a plus b cubed and this is where I'm going to write it out, is my soap. Okay, so, and then I'm going to highlight this symbol so you can see it. S stands for same, opposite of positive, which is negative, and AP, which is always positive. Okay, and that soap actually applies to the other one as well, so let's just fill that out. So A, B, A squared, A, B, B squared. Let's do that for this one over here. Now we're gonna have a minus sign, so a minus b cubed equals what's the same? A um, same is minus, opposite of minus is a plus, and then plus. Okay, so it's just a formula you have to memorize. Um, but soap's actually gonna be in here. Watch this. It doesn't ha tell us how to start, but I can just eliminate problems based off of soap. Okay, let's write out soap. Same, opposite, always positive. Okay? Look at this one. If this starts as a positive, then this one has to be a minus, but it's not. So we're not picking that one. Okay? Okay, so I have same, so Positive, opposite, always positive. That one works. Okay, let's look at the next one. Same, opposite. Are these opposites? No, so wrong. Um, let's look at D. I have a plus. So what's the opposite of that? That's a minus, then plus. So if your b value is 4, 4 squared is uh, 16, so that works. Let's look at the same thing over here. I have a minus sign, so again, soap, same, opposite. This is opposite, that's good, and always positive, good. If uh, my b value is 10, so this is going to be 10 squared, which is 100, that works. And the last one, same, opposite, always positive. That one works too, okay? So we have three of them as our answer, B, D, E, and F, okay? Four of those are sum and differences of cube. All right, here is the grading scale for question number three. This is how many points you would have earned based on how many you picked were correct and incorrect. All right, question number four. If you're looking at your flow chart, you're always looking for first the GCF, GCF, okay? So, oops, does this problem have a GCF? Well, you can break them into factors. Um, that box is probably not big enough. What are the factors of 405 X to the fourth? Well, I'm gonna look ahead and not cheat, but think ahead, five. And then how many times does five go into 40? That is um, eight. And how many times does five go into five? Goes in once. And then negative five X squared is negative one times five times X squared. I'm gonna circle the things they have in common. So that is a five. And they also have uh, X squared. 
Okay, what did we not circle? So 81 x squared. And then over here, you just have that negative one. So 5x squared is my GCF, and then I have um, this one here. Okay, you'll notice they'll try to trick you with this one. I don't think that is the correct one, but I did leave a big space because I know it's going to be a um, difference um, of squares. Okay, I'll show you the shortcut after I do it the long way. I put a 0x in there because half of 2 is 1. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to factor what's inside the we're going to factor what that's not an x. We're going to factor what's inside there in yellow. Okay, let's do that together. You could also use a chunking method here, but a b c a times c is uh, negative 81 my b value is zero my two numbers are going to be nine and negative nine nine and negative nine we are splitting this one so that has an x there and the top left will always go the whole a term and the c term always goes in the bottom right all right, so GCF going this direction is a 9x. GCF in this direction is a minus 1. You guys like purple? This direction, I think it is going to be a positive 1, and this direction will be a positive 9x. So from, let's choose green here. Nine x minus one, nine x plus one is going to be our answer. Okay, so <clears throat> which is the factor? Um, that means it's only going to be one of these, um, and I see that in B. So B is our answer because it's that one right there. Okay. Um, how do you do this problem with this portion right there with the shortcut? If it's called the difference of squares, because if you can take the square of each side, square root of 81 is 9, and the square root of x squared is x. So how that works is you'll put 9x, 9x, and the square root of 1 is 1, and then you'll just make 1 plus 1 minus. And so this is the same thing as what we did in the both x and the box. So a different method. It's hard to, to figure that one out when you kind of see if you can take the subtraction sign and then they're both squares. Okay, number five, factor this one. It's a trinomial, one, two, three. And what is half of four? It is two. So I can just use my Xbox method of factoring. But remember now, if you just use A equals one is just for the X and you need both the X and the box if A is greater than one. Okay, so in this problem, a is 1, it's right there, B is 2, and C is negative 24. So I don't need the box, I could just, but it'll help you understand how to, why I got the answer, okay? So A times C is negative 24, B value is 2. What are the two numbers that multiply be negative 24, but they add to be 2? I'm thinking of 6 and 4, and this one will be a negative. Okay, remember those numbers in red. I'm going to use this in the box. We don't have to, but the box, the red, is splitting this term, so I have to add a x squared. 6x squared minus a 4x squared gives you a 2x squared. Okay, and then 
top left, we're going to put always the A term, and the C term always goes in the bottom right. We're just going to take out the greatest common factor. That's going to be an x squared. Greatest common factor. Um, I'm thinking 6 here, and um, I'm happy with that for now. Let's pick a different color I haven't used. How about orange? This direction is going to be an x squared. Grace con factor, I think it'll be a negative 4. Alright, let's double check our answer here. Um, x squared times x squared equals x to the 4th. x squared times negative 4 is negative 4x four squared. Um, x squared times 6 gives us 6x squared, and 6 times negative 4 gives me negative 24. Okay, why did I say in red you didn't need that? Well, look here. x squared plus 6. Let me, hold on, sorry, I missed that. Plus 6, you see that? You can just put it there. And the other one is going to be x squared minus 4, which is up here. All right, a little tricky in this problem. You have to uh, do it again. You still have to start recognizing the difference of squares. If you don't, put a placeholder of 0x. And then when you factor that, um, that one's just going to be x plus 2, x minus 2. All right, this was a common mistake for students to solve question number 5, x squared plus 6. You're going to set it equal to 0. And then I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. Remember there's two x's here, x, x. So if I take the square root, then I have x equals um, the plus or minus the square root of negative 6. The square root of negative 6 we learned earlier this year is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 6 square root of negative 1 that comes out, that's called i, and you have plus or minus. So one solution is x equals i radical 6, the other one is x equals negative i radical 6. Factor completely. And this is a trinomial, there's 1, 2, 3. Okay, pay attention here. Uh, what's half of 5? Is it 3? The answer is no, which means um, you can't use xbox yet. No xbox. Okay, what does that mean? You should always use uh, GCF first. So again, you can do a strategy. I'm just going to place it in a big box with three bins because I have 3 times x times x times x times x times x and 2 times 5 times x times x times x and 7 is 7 times x. Do they have anything in common? They have 1x. So my GCF is x and then what's left is this 3x to the fourth plus 10x squared uh, plus 7. Let's write that. So now I have this. All right, let me highlight this with yellow. That is a trinomial. Half of four is two with the exponents there. Now I can use my Xbox method of factoring. In this problem, I have to use both. So again, we're looking there in the highlighted yellow. A. B, C. So A times C is 21. My B value is 10. My two numbers that multiplied to be uh, 21 are um, 7 and 3. And 7 plus 3 is 10. So I have 7 and 3. This is splitting this term right here. So I have to add an x squared. The first term always goes here. And the last term always goes right here. 
let's go ahead and find out our GCF here. GCF going in this direction is x uh, squared. Okay, this one doesn't look like anything, but I'm going to put plus 1. Plus 1. And this direction, 3x squared. That's a 2. And this direction, plus 7. Let's double check our answers, um, seeing if we can just multiply it. x squared times 3x squared gives me 3x to the fourth. 1 times 3x squared gives me 3x squared. x squared times 7 gives you 7x squared. And 7 times 1 gives you 7. So, okay, pay attention. I just highlighted those in red. So let's write those out. Um, x squared plus 1 and 3x squared plus 7. And don't forget you have that x in front. Okay, in this question, after you factored it, you're going to set each of these equal to 0. So there's one solution. It's going to go through the origin. Uh, you don't need to graph them, it's teaching you how to solve it. Set it equal to 0, subtract 1, take the square root. <coughs> Remember, when you take the square root, you have a plus or minus. That's one thing. The second thing is the square root of negative 1 turns into i. So x equals plus or minus i. You have two complex solutions here. The second one, 3x squared plus 7. You'll subtract 7 from both sides. Divide by 3. And then take the square root. <coughs> um, you have the square root of negative 7 over radical 3. The square root of negative 1 just becomes i out in front. The 7 over 3, you cannot, is radical 7 over radical 3. We learned earlier in first semester, you have to rationalize. You can have a radical here, so you multiply by this number, radical 3 over radical 3. You can change it by 1, you'll get radical 21 over 3. So your answer is x equals plus or minus i, radical 21 over 3. This is, again, two more um, complex solutions. What, what could it look like? This is an odd degree. You didn't have to graph this, but it's only going through one real solution there. Okay, question number five, you were awarded points based on if you got most of the factoring correct for the X puzzle. Then I gave you three points, three and a half if all of your factoring was correct. Remember, a common mistake was you're supposed to factor and solve. So that means setting it equal to zero and then solving. Question number seven says mandatory pick one of the questions. So this is question number one. I just copied it from the front. Here again, you're going to add a zero X. So your A value is one, your B value is zero, C value is negative nine. When you put that in, that'll be three and negative three. Set it equal to zero. You get x equals negative 3. So x equals negative 3. This has an odd multiplicity. There's a 1 there. So what that does is here at this point, it's going to shoot through. x equals 3. So over here. And then x equals negative 5 thirds. You're going to subtract 5 and then divide by 3. That's like negative 1.67, so more than negative 1 and a half. This has a odd degree. Odd degree easiest is x to the first, which looks like that starts down ends up so we start down and up shoot through shoot through and then the c value not the c value the constant kind of tells you so shoot through shoot through and exit now if you chose to graph number five <coughs> I gave you two points if you knew based on the 
degree of the polynomial, you know, where were the arrows. So we got the arrows in the correct position, then I gave you some points. If you chose to graph number 5, you have negative 2. And you have x equals 2. <coughs> and their multiplicity is up here. This is an odd multiplicity. It tells you to shoot through. This is an even degree polynomial, looking at the highest degree. The easiest even degree we know is x squared, which is like a problem in smiles, so those arrows start up and up. We go left to right. I know my y-intercept is negative 24. That's the constant. And then what do you do with the plus or minus i radical 6? Well, i means imaginary, and this is the real. So you actually don't see this, so it only crosses two times. One, two. And I did put a bump <coughs> in here, because remember, turning points is equal to the degree minus one. So if you have a fourth degree polynomial, we have to have... Um, three turning points. So one, two, three. Well, we've got you covered with Savannah's insurance so that you can get good grades without having to worry about detention ever again. So what are you waiting for? Get a quote today and save up to 20% off multiplication charts.